How are you? Yeah, so great. So thanks so much for joining. And um, I, it is very much appreciated uh, to have you uh, here with us. And um, your focus is on customer operations, right? So this is uh, your main um, line of work. And uh, that is, yeah. I, I am assuming that it, it must be quite different to work with customer operations in a country like Zimbabwe, where uh, the economy tends to be you know, very unpredictable and um, the challenges that you would have in a place like London or New York. So I'll you know, be very curious to know more about the wisdom you've learned along the way, you know, your personal and professional lives. And thanks again uh, for joining. So the, the stage is yours. All right. No, thank you very much for that, Marcelo. Um, so I think just to start things off, obviously, you've, you have mentioned, um, I'm currently the incoming curator for Global Shapers at Harare Hub. That's uh, uh, you know, under Global Shippers community in Zimbabwe. Um, Professional-wise, I am the customer operations uh, manager, a senior manager role in Zimbabwe's largest FMCG consumer goods company. Um, yes, and I'm also climate reality leader. Um, so that's an opportunity I got through Global Shapers. And uh, that's a program under uh, former United States Vice President Al Gore. Um, and also, I was just recently um you know nominated as one of Zimbabwe's 40 under 30 emerging leaders um in that space as well so i just like to start off by you know just giving a bit of background in terms of where i came from you know from the days when i started in, you know when i went through high school you know the decisions that i took that all led to where i am here today and you know sort of the key lessons that i did glean you know across the process the you know the people that had a key element in in helping me be, uh, do what i do today so just, you know, in very short, um, you know, in high school, um, you know, in Zimbabwe, we, have, we, we, we go through the Cambridge, uh, you know, system, IGCSE, then the A-levels, but we've also got the local boards, which is ZIMSAC. So I went through the Cambridge uh, syllabus. And I think through high school, I was always that person and, you know, who was always interested in everything. Like I was interested in science and then with just that same intent, I was very interested in commercials, you know, uh, and, and history and arts. So I used to find it very difficult to say, where exactly do I want to end up? What do I want to end up doing um, with my life? Where do, I end, where do I see myself in the next five to 10 years? So when I was in high school, when I was, you know, like 15 to 18, I wasn't quite clear with what that meant for me. All I knew is that I was good in this different spaces. I was good in the sciences. So you talked physics, chemistry, I was there, you know, pushing that. Uh, if you talked uh, business studies and accounting, I was there, economics, you know, do, doing that. Arts, similarly, and literature and language. So, you know, even to the extent of my final A-level combination, I chose a hybrid science and commercial, you know, um, combination, you know, and people found that odd, even my parents. Um, but for me, it was just like, look, I'm not too sure at this point what I want to do, but all I know is that I'm good at these and, you know, let's continue to explore. Fast forward from that, I finished my A-level and I went to university, you know, and I, again, not being too clear where exactly I wanted to go, but just having some sort of inclination to certain areas. I then chose a degree program called Bachelor of Business Studies and Computer Science. Now, this is a dual degree program um, at the University of Zimbabwe. Um, which looks at both the full modules within the computer science arena, as well as the full modules within the business space as well. So you've got this degree program that's business and tech. So on finishing that program, you know, ultimately um, we go through this process in this country in Zimbabwe, where, you know, at university, you have to do an attachment. So an attachment is during, in the third year of university, you have to go to a certain company and you, for that year you are in your role or in your area of study you are shadowing and learning and actually doing work so i did that and straight after i finished that same company called me back and this time they called me back into an it role so i did it for like a year so on paper um i was doing management kind of work when it came to the to the it work so management of servers um working with systems and programming i did a lot of that 
within my final year at university when they called me back after my attachments. So I was doing that together with school. Now that part of my life then showed me that, you know what, as much as I'm quite fairly good at, at this IT thing, um, it's not really where it's not really what I want to spend my life doing, uh, which is in, in, which is programming. I can do it. I, I understand the logics. I have done various programs, but it, it didn't feel like that was the right way to go. And because of that, I then made a, a conscious decision to move into commercial. So I was now looking for a commercial role that would allow me to develop my business side uh, sort of skill sets and, you know, really look into that space and just grow in that, and you know, in that space as well. And that's what I did. And up until today, um, the, current, the current company that I work for now allows me to do both as well. It allows me to not only look at, um, so my current role not only allow, not only gives me the opportunity to still work on IT related sort of work. So I have projects that look at sales force automation in terms of automating how our sales teams, um, the sales teams processes when they're going out to the field. Um, it also looks at other projects that look at, uh, uh, you know, GPS technology, harnessing GPS technology to understand where our customers are and how what we're doing in that space, and also using devices um, to collect data because data analytics is becoming it's really a massive opportunity for companies and businesses to expand and grow and understand. So outside of the technology elements of my current role, there's a lot of commercial elements where I deal commercially and you know shopper you know shopper analytics just understanding how the consumer market is working, you know, just understanding the flow of goods from our company to the market and just managing that whole process flow. So there's a lot more operational and commercial work as well. So my current role still allows me to tap into the business and commercial as well as technology. So that that's predominantly what I'm doing now, you know, technology to drive data, to drive insights, and to use that to continue to move the business forward um, in this world that we are in today. So, with that, I, I'm hoping that you've all had a chance to see something quite interesting. And that's at each stage in time um, from high school, you know, to now, it's really been a process of exploration and understanding myself better. You know, we're all different. Some people come into life and they're very clear what they want to do right from the get-go. You have young children and teenagers who say, hey, I want to be a doctor. This is what I want to do. And I know it and nothing else. But for others, it's not the same. The parts to identifying what your purpose is, is not always going to be the same like the next person. So we have to be okay to explore and to understand what that means for us um, all the way up until now and continue to leverage it, leverage on that as well. So I think just now building from that conversation, um, having spoken about my past, having spoken about my present professional role, I'm also a person who's very passionate about um, developing myself and continue to find ways of, of, of giving value to the communities that we serve in. So, you know, what, straight up out of high school, I then joined this uh, program called Rotract. So that program called Rotract allowed me to be able to, 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 you know, it's to be able to learn how to serve in the communities and to grow my leadership skills and grow my soft skills. And I'll come to that point as well, why it's very important in your in your process of exploration and understanding and just growing as an individual and finding your purpose. So Roadtract, which is a program or was a program under Road to International, now it's a membership type, was designed for 18 to 30 year olds and to help them develop as leaders. Now Roadtract is a massive, you know, great, great community. And I've learned, I've been part of the community for the last 10 years and I've learned, you know, quite immense uh, knowledge, you know, or gathered quite immense knowledge there and networked and got to meet amazing people and amazing young people who are doing amazing things across in, you know, the world. And currently, because of my involvement in Rotaract, I'm currently serving, uh, since the establishment of Rotary over 100 years ago, I'm the first Rotaractor uh, person who's under 30 to serve on a zonal committee. So I serve on the zonal committee for Rotary in Africa, and I'm the only Rotaractor to have done, or the first to have done that. And I'm also using now this opportunity to show other young people that it doesn't matter. Your age is not a component in terms of what you can bring to the table. It's simply your desire to be able to deliver value, your desire to be able to be part of a team and to be able to drive the agenda if you believe in it. And age should never be a hindrance. If you are passionate about that, you need to pursue it. And I can be a testament to that. Obviously, through the right mentorship and through the right networks, I can speak to that now. 
Um, but we also have, as young people, need to be able to tap into the spaces. Um, so outside of Rotary and the work that we're doing in Rotary, I spoke to Global Shapers Community, and I know one of the earlier speakers definitely touched on, might have touched on that element as well, and the work that we're doing in that space. So I'm quite excited for the year that's coming through and, you know, the impact that we can drive on that agenda, as well as climate reality. So because of Global Shapers Community uh, that I joined two years ago, I had the opportunity to go and be trained in Minnesota um, by the US Vice President Al Gore in terms of climate. And since then, I've delivered um, presentations in three different African countries, with being Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, and, uh, and Rwanda, uh, well, as well as my home country, to all to total over, I think, over a thousand uh, young people, just driving the agenda of why it's important to start thinking sustainably about the impact of climate and what we need to do to safeguard our futures now. So that's another very passionate area that I'm quite, I'm quite involved in, in that aspect. So I think just having shown you the journey and just having you know, shared with you, you know, how I started and how I am where I am today and the value of that, I think the key principles that really have taught, you know, helped me to and shaped me um, and continue to shape me. Obviously this is a journey and we continue to learn and unravel new mysteries about ourselves and what we really should be pursuing and, and our purpose. But first and foremost, be open to continuously exploring. Not everyone has the same path of understanding what their purpose is and what they want to start to deliver or to do in their lives. It's okay to try and say, and when you try, you, you are much clearer about, okay, this is not what I want to do. I'd like to try something else. Um, but when you try, when you explore, you begin to know what you are interested in and what you're not in. So be open to the process, the process of exploration, as well as in that process, be open to mentorship and guidance. So join organizations like the ones, you know, it could be the, like the ones that I've mentioned, you know, Rotary, Global Shapers, Climate, you know, Climate Corps, or you can be other great organizations like JCI, Leo's, Toastmasters, you name it. Find networks that you can tap into that also get to not only develop your, your skills, which are massively important in this world now outside of your technical knowledge but also get to develop you as an individual and as a responsible leader you know the world where we're going you know the world now is, is looking for young leaders who are very responsible we call it the responsible leadership framework that was coined by accenture um it, it, you know dave was quite quite uh, some time back but it's such a key framework where we, we shouldn't always be driven by profit, but we should be driven by impact. So joining networks that look at community and service and impact will also help to hone your skills in becoming a responsible leader. So that's quite, quite important. I, I really implore um, young people to really tap into these networks because what you will learn and the networks that you will gain are unbelievable. And, you know, the, the potential of, you know, the potential upside is just, it's, it's really about when you tap into it and you invest your time into it, what you can achieve is limitless. So get to tap into these networks, get to enrich yourself and get to grow as an individual and explore and understand yourself. So that those are some of the key principles that I've learned. Be open to exploration, make sure you've got mentors, tap into the networks that will help to grow you and to grow your, your ideas and, and understanding of the world, you know, and continue to learn, continue, continue to learn. There's no perfect way forward. There's no perfect way launch. There's no perfect end. But the journey of excellence, of achieving that, you know, is what makes it worth it. So continue to be open to that and continue to explore and to search for who you are and what your purpose is. So because of all of, you know, all this that I've been doing to date, I was then awarded with a leadership scholarship, a full leadership scholarship from the African Leadership Networks University in Rwanda that I've now, I'm now six months into. And it's, it's amazing that the network as well, I'm tapping into that, you know, with these young business leaders across the continent who are also um, driving that agenda in their different spaces. So when you continue to develop, people will continue to notice, organizations will continue to notice, and it makes it easier to always tap into more exciting opportunities. So I think in that, um, Marcelo, I think just I'd, I'd just like to stop there and maybe then address now questions. But ideally, that's some of the key learnings that I just wanted to pass on. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, and congratulations on all your achievements, right? So it's um, a, a big deal uh, at many levels, but the uh, the correlations are probably uh, the uh, the point for further discussion. Like, uh, how are you a better shaper because you were 
uh, with Rotaract and uh, how um, it's like a, a magical flywheel, right? So this really heavy engine that takes time to keep in motion or to you know, get to pick up speed. But uh, how do you see this dynamic of joining a great organization like Rotary, facilitating the process of you joining other great organizations because of people you meet, of things you learn, or just um, you know, destiny knocking on your door and you are paying attention so you see those opportunities. Can you try to summarize that and uh, transform that into a magic pill that teenagers can maybe you know, try to uh, have a taste and start by picking the association that uh, is easiest, right? The closest to them, or maybe a member of the family is uh, also a part of. And uh, how can they uh, accelerate that wisdom of um, finding places where they're going to feel like they belong? Great. Thank you for the question, Marcelo. That's a very good one. So, funny enough, um, when I joined Road Tract in 2011, it was because of a friend. So, I had just come to university a couple of months in, and there was this guy that I knew for quite some time, you know, in my childhood. And he was like, hey, I'm actually, you know, part of this thing called Road Tract. I'm not sure, do you know about it? I was like, no, I don't. I do not know anything. And he was like, well, you were in Tract back in high school. So basically, Road Tract is like the big brother. You're just doing it. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> so I was like, great. You know what? Um, you know, I, I'm not doing anything really at the moment. So I think let me try it out. And within, as soon as I just, you know, took that opportunity, I said, let me just do it. Um, we think within a year, um, I was now being selected or, you know, nominated for presidency of that club. Naturally, um, I'm an introvert, naturally. It's my natural inclination to, you know, in terms of how I deal and process things, I, I, deal it, I tend to deal with it from an introverted sort of uh, perspective. Because of road tracks and because now I was getting involved in leadership roles and getting this opportunity to, you know, network and, get to do all this great work with a young group of other, you know, like-minded people. Um, I saw myself getting to explore myself more in terms of what I could do outside of the introverted, my introverted nature. So now, because when you're president, you have to address your room, you have to be making presentations, you have to be doing a lot more, a uh, lot more that really can take, you know, much out of a natural introvert. So it's one of the key learnings or one of the key areas that I grew in because now, Within two years of joining Road Tract, you know, we had this big symposium, a young leaders symposium, and I was asked to come and speak in front of 5,000 people um, physically back then. And here is an introvert who's never done public speaking, who's never done Toastmasters at this point in time. So it's that and many other things. Like we then had this great campaign. One of my most favorite campaigns we ever did when I was president is we partnered with this lady who was a Rotarian. Um, she was an ambassador for, for you know, um, for, for environment under UN in Zimbabwe and Sub-Saharan Africa. So we did this project where we planted over 500 trees with young people in partnership with the university that I was at. And we had ambassadors coming through. We had all these different stakeholders. And I also learned this, that skill set that comes from doing a project like that, you know, engaging stakeholders, making sure that you're quite clear about what you do and what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it and how it will also benefit them. So I can really say that within those three years whilst I was at university in Road Tract, I still am part of Road Tract now, but I just want to focus on that part in closing to your question that within those three years, um, by joining this network, I got to not only develop my leadership skills and develop my public speaking skills and get to develop um, and, you know, other soft skills that are quite important, but I also got, got to learn key things such as project management, you know, stakeholder management, um, understanding what, you know, the balance between expectations between different stakeholders and how you always need to be able to unify that. So that has served me quite immensely. So because of that, currently as well, I'm serving on the Alumni Council of the University of Zimbabwe. So the Alumni Council is like the oldest, uni well, the university is like the oldest university in Zimbabwe um, by heritage and history and size. Um, as, so I was the only young person who was not a CEO serving on this council invited because of the work that we were doing in Road Tract. So it also, got, you know, people began to notice and say, look, you've got this young man who's doing all of this and, you know, and has managed to achieve all of this. So we think that his expertise and what he can bring to the table can be quite valuable. So because when you, when you join or become part of a network, the key thing is you have to get involved, right? That's the reality. You only get out of something what you put in. 
So when you get involved, you begin to not only develop, but you also begin to challenge yourself in many different ways. And when you begin to do that, you go, you're going to make, there will be times when you make losses and you, things don't go your way, but there'll be many times when you make very positive wins, which people will also acknowledge and notice, and that continues to open more doors for you. So because of Rotract and because Rotract is mostly focused on humanitarian activities, I, be, I wanted to start exploring more uh, about other networks, must, to, to your point, Marcelo. So one of the Rotractors I met was a past curator of the Global Shapers Bulawayo Hub, which is the other hub in Zimbabwe. And she was like, hey, I'm a Rotractor. I, I heard about what you're talking about, you know, what you're searching for. I'm part of Global Shapers. Would you want to be a part of it? And now because of her, I'm part of the Global Shapers Network today. So through those processes now you know my experience in road track my networks that i've built throughout the years and you know just having an open mind to continuously learning as well because global shapers communities is a whole different animal together as well and it's very exciting um the prospects of what we can achieve in this space together and you know driving policy and dialogue um in that space so knitting that back to your point um Marcelo, that you asked or your question about you know is zimbabwe and obviously the economic element because of global shapers um, I had the opportunity to, to moderate and drive dialogue with two key ministers from a policy perspective in the last two years. The first one was the Minister of Finance and Economic Development. And from that forum, we were able to now launch the currency that the country is using today. That currency was launched nine months after that forum because the dialogue began in that forum about why it is important to probably look at utilizing um, uh, you know, local currency and obviously the pros and cons. And we debated that. And now because of that, we have a standpoint. My second session was also I did with the Minister of International Affairs and Relations. So as you are aware of, you know, where we are as a country and, you know, the agenda in terms of us re-engaging the international community, we saw it fit as young leaders through Global Shapers to engage with the ministry office and say, hey, how can we be a part of it? Tell us what the challenges you're facing and how we can help you re-engage the international community. So we, I had that uh, fireside chat with the Minister of um, um, International Relations um, then, and it was also very exciting prospects that we are unlocking from that. So we, we're also utilizing these different platforms to also drive change, you know, outside of the humanitarian impact, but also just within the economy of Zimbabwe in whatever way that we can. I think a, a point worth making is that um, older generations really want to listen to the young ones because they want to be inclusive. It doesn't mean that it's going to be giving up on power it just means that they want to be more inclusive so that their power makes more sense right that they are representing um a, you know a cross-generational uh segment of society and they're making better decisions along the way and the one thing that uh, most young people don't realize is that because the expectations on them doing senior things like being members of councils and everything else are not as high as they would be of someone with a phd and uh, you know a 20 years career you actually have this amazing situation where you're allowed to make many more mistakes and people go like that's fine because this is such an impressive young person will still be supporting him or her and um, that's one of the reasons why I created the Wisdom Accelerator, so that more and more young people have this opportunity to uh, access um, interesting learning experiences to become wiser faster, really. And uh, they realize that, hey, no, it's not that bad. Like, it's not like I'm going to be um, severely punished if I don't give a good presentation because I haven't trained with Toastmasters. And your example is really great because you have the dominoes falling, right? You know, one thing leading to another and those magical moments uh, sometimes are very hard to identify. In your case, it was a friend saying, why not? And you're like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a go and see where you are right now. Like, you know, 10 years later, just imagine if you had said, nah, I'd rather play video games. No, nope. your life would be completely different. I don't know if it would be better. You'd probably be playing video games better, you know, if you had invested more time in that, I'm not sure if the society would have benefited uh, as much as it has so far. So it's a great way of doing it. It's a, let me know how I can support you. And we'll be uh, happy to open opportunities uh, globally to the youth of Zimbabwe. I know that you have a complicated history, uh, but you also have this massive advantage of um, uh, speaking English fluently due to you know, the best 
um, events in the country. So yeah, we'd love to carry on a conversation on uh, how we can get more teenagers from Zimbabwe to um, have a presence uh, in the world stage and uh, following your example and creating new ones as they go. Yeah, quite excited about that. I think let's definitely explore those options um, because I think just to also add on, um, recently we've, you know, we've, our Minister minister of uh, Youth, uh, Kirsty, Honorable Kirsty Carpentry, um, is, is, a, is a young person who's also very, you know, very strong and in, in terms of believing and in, in getting young people involved in different platforms. So we're also working quite closely with them as well to see how we can get more teenagers and how we can get more young people um, part of the agenda and part of, you know, part of the conversations that do matter. Um, it's, it's massively important. So yes, I think there will definitely be exciting opportunities there, Marcelo, uh, that we can definitely explore. Thank you, Marcelo, appreciate it. Well, the Take care.